Oh, thanks for inviting me, Steve. Uh, I'm George. Um, from Box Hill Senior Secondary, where it's like a specialist sports school. Um, anybody heard of Ben Simmons? That's my name to fame? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the NBA just signed a $220 million. I taught him percentages in high school anyway. So hopefully he can reduce the percentage to his manager. But, um... <laughs> so ask me about those things, but I'm not limited to that. I'm known as a Hattie critique, a critic. Critique, critique. 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 Um, don't use Twitter much, so that's my email. I find Twitter very frustrating. <laughs> don't get too intellectual, but uh, many years ago I was listening to Chomsky. Anybody heard of Noam Chomsky? <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about the media, and he, he reckoned that um, television and radio are very dif difficult to um, explain a complex idea because you've got, you've got to do it between two commercial breaks. And I think in America it was like you had seven minutes to explain it. And he said it's impossible to... Um, challenge any, you know, any political thing in seven minutes. In my opinion, Twitter's worse. You've got 120 words. Mm. Oh, There's no way I need to do it. Oh, sorry, 240. Okay, so uh, the thing that's bothered me for the last couple of years is the demise of teacher experience, agency and expertise. Um, and I've, I've often wondered why. Like, um, just recently, Steve and I have been involved in the, probably the largest statewide initiative for government school, the Middle School Literacy and Numeracy Initiative. I think it's nearly $200 million or maybe a little bit more. Um, so it's aim, it's got a great aim of improving literacy and numeracy to all kids, uh, which will underpin the skills or more complicated skills like creative and critical thinking um, that children will have in the future. But to me it was ironic that uh, in the training, I've done six of the eight days training, that um, ironically those skills weren't needed by teachers in that, that training. You could not be critical and you could not be creative. Um, mostly because of this evidence-based agenda, uh, mostly by John Hattie, the Educational Endowment Foundation and the Australian offshoot called the Evidence for Learning. Um, most of the time the evidence that was presented in those conferences was evidence from these, these sorts of organisations. And if there wasn't an opportunity to either um, discuss or critique the evidence that was given. So basically it was just accepted as being true. So there's no forum for us um, to be critical. And worse, there was no acknowledgement of the significant peer review. In Hattie's case, I've tried to collect, I found 50 peer review papers that pull his work apart. Yet most teachers aren't aware aware of that work. Um, whoops. Uh, how and why? I think why probably is related to the neoliberal agenda, which probably is another time for another discussion. <laughs> how? Well, there's lots, lots of hows, but I think these sorts of memes have infiltrated particularly government education. Uh, classic statement by Hattie, statements without evidence are just opinions. I think that belittles teacher experience and knowledge. And worse, Kevin Collins, who's what, who did take over the Educational Endowment Foundation, which, is, which was an extension of Hattie's work, he said, if you're not using evidence to inform decisions, then you must be using prejudice. So, a little bit of conflict of interest there, I think, given that they're all, all selling stuff, but anyway. Um, and worse, Hattie again, I don't know if this really bothered me when I read it, Hattie claimed in his famous book, Visible Learning, when teachers claim they're having a positive effect on, on achievement or when policy improves achievement, this is almost always a trivial claim. And Hattie reckons that virtually everything works in the classroom. Um, and then the statement that bothers me, one only needs a pulse and we can improve achievement. Um, I'm surprised very few people have challenged that statement. To me, it's, it's really... Um, it integrates teacher experience and skill. Uh, just one little example. Um, Hattie said almost everything works, but we use one of Hattie's studies on feedback. Feedback um, is a complicated notion. Uh, the study that he cites is the best study on feedback in his regime of feedback studies, and the Education Endowment Foundation say the same thing. Is this particular study? If you need a copy, I've got a copy. One of the one of the problems with the work of Hattie and those who use meta-analysis is they combine all of these studies and get one number that represents the whole work. In this particular case, 
how to use is I think 0.38. Uh, the education endowment fund get a slightly different age of 0.41. The difference actually is why they get the difference is another matter. Um, it doesn't really matter in this particular case, but in other areas there are wide differences in the way you calculate the average. But in this case, um, these, I won't go too much, but these are effect sizes. Basically, a positive effect size means you're improving achievement, and a negative effect size means you're somehow rather decreasing achievement. Um, and all of these studies combined together show that 38% of studies decreased achievement, um, which contradicts how this claim that everything works, and also shows the problem of representing all of that with one number, 0.38. 0.38 really misrepresents what's actually going on. That is rife, right through the whole meta, in my opinion, all the stuff that I've read, it's rife right throughout that particular method of study. Um, Gerd Jester, who's quite an influential European, uh, Dutch I think he is, scholar, wrote this in 2010, um, warning us about this evidence-based agenda overtaking teacher experience. He calls it a form of totalitarianism. totalitarianism and he then warns that this could overtake teacher professional judgment. And that's pretty much what I think has happened in our schools. In, I mean, the government system here in Victoria, that's pretty much what's happened here in the last, I don't know, five years or so. Um, he has to continue, which, which is a thing that I like to take in 2020. Basically what he says is teaching is a, a much more complicated skill and notion than what the evidence and what um, scholars have been able to produce. Uh, and Ben Goldacre is an English scientist after looking at meta-analysis and effect sizes says, and I think this is a meme that I'd like to take in 2020 as well, it's a bit more complicated than that. <laughs> uh, this graph summarises to me the problem of the sorts of uh, scientific work and studies that are being used these days to decide policy and uh, practice, that the complexity of teaching is reduced to one data point. Um, hopefully you can see there's a problem with that. Okay, the AU priorities, I was part with Steve, we sat down and worked out the priorities at the start of this year. The two priorities were reduced teacher workload and increased teacher agency. So the union tried to set to, in wheel, wheels in motion to improve both of those things. Uh, how? Well, one of the things they did was with Steve and the, the committee, they tried to get more teacher involvement in curriculum design rather than being top down. They wrote a brilliant document that's, uh, that was then uh, presented to all AEU members. I think it's well, well worth a read. Um, but they stopped at teacher practice and pedagogy. So I think the next stage is for the union, uh, or a powerful organisation, to look at teacher practice. Um, because at least in the government system here, we're pretty much defined and held back by what we call the high impact teaching strategies. Who knows about those? Yeah. So there are 10 high impact teaching strategies that pretty much all have performance review. We have to tick the boxes based on Hattie's book, mostly. Um, New South Wales has done a similar thing with, with its seven what works best, once again based on Hattie. And once again, I'm sure New South Wales teachers would have to tick in the box each year to satisfy those seven. Um, I think the union needs to look at those and because teaching's been very narrowly defined. Um, I'd like to also, another mantra, I've got a lot of mantras and memes. Uh, Dylan Williams, I like teachers need to be critical consumers of research. I think that's part of the reason why a lot of this bogus, I'll call it bogus, some people call it pseudoscience, has got through to the mainstream. Um, and in particular, I think we should promote the significant peer-reviewed critique of this evidence-based agenda. Um, lobby the AEU, read some content, in particular, I think, Teachers ought to read the class size research and we should challenge Hattie's notion that class size doesn't matter. He's backed off from that a little bit now, but he really did make a note for himself by saying class size doesn't matter. And I've created a blog where people can um, present that information. So thank you if you want to help out. <laughs>